of the ship of his passion. Enter into his gate with thanksgiving into his court with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. For God is good. And all the time, his mercy is everlasting and his truth is doing to all generations. Let us pray. Eternal God and Father, we are so grateful for the opportunity to come between these consecrated walls once again to hear if there's a word from the Lord. And we know that there's always a word for us that comes from the Lord. So God, as we come today, oh God, as we gather together today, we pray that you will remove from our hearts anything that even resembles sin. Make our hearts conducive for your word, that we will not only hear your word, but we all will be doers of your word. Father, we thank you today. We ask your blessing on every home that is represented here today, every individual. Bless them individually as well as collectively. Father, we thank you. We pray that you would anoint the fingers of the musician, anoint the voices of the singers, oh God. Oh God, we ask that you just anoint the preacher from the crown of his head to the soul of his feet. Use him for your glory. Speak to him and speak through him, Father. We pray that somebody will be saved. Somebody will desire a closer walk with you, Lord. Lord, we thank you today. We bless you today. We praise you. We give you glory. We give you honor. God, be there. Oh, God, just have your way. Have your way, oh, God. Do what you want to as long as you want to, God. So we thank you. We praise you. We give you glory. We give you honor. In the precious, magnificent name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Sweet. I know. Sweet. I know.
Then we're we'll coming to read down the scripture after which, brother Dr. Lawson, will come and pray. Amen. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In our Bibles, Second Timothy, second chapter. Second Timothy, the second chapter. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Second Timothy, second chapter. Amen. It reads, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same comment thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Now therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Christ Jesus Christ. No man that wars entangled himself with the affairs of his dislike that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for mastery, yet he is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. The husband that labors must be first partaker of the fruit. Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Remember that Christ that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer even into bounds. But the word of God is not bound. These are the of the Lord and our response to these words is Lord. Lord, Lord help, help us to be a doer of thy word and not a hearer only. Amen. Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, once again we come, Lord God, giving you all praise, glory, and honor. Heavenly Father, we just come just thanking you, Father. Thanking you for being so good in spite of us, oh Lord God, you continue to bless us over and over again. We thank you, Lord God, for your precious son, Jesus Christ, oh Lord, who died and raised the dead from the dead, dear Lord God. We thank you that he is forever in heaven, dear Lord God, making an intercession for us, dear Lord. For Lord God, we have all sinned and fall short of your glory, Lord. Have mercy upon us this morning. As we worship you, Lord God, let us look up to you, Lord God, with a heart of praise and a heart a heart of grace, a heart of love, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, we just thank you for your mercy, for your kind, your awesome, and all of our ways, dear Lord God. And Lord God, we just thank you, thank you, thank you. Lord, we, if we had 10,000 tongues this morning, we couldn't thank you and praise you enough. Oh, Lord God, we thank you that you gave us another opportunity to come into the house of prayer. Oh, Lord God, if the world ever needed prayer before, truly they need prayer. We need prayer today, Lord God. So much going on in our world today, Lord God, we can't even keep up with it, neither can it lose their Lord. So much crime and hatred, oh God, in the world, but there's so much also in the church today, dear Lord God. Dear Lord God, we pray that you would teach us your love, yes. teach us your forgiveness, yes. teach us your mercy, yes. teach us how to lift yes. each other up, dear Lord God. Yes. Teach us, yes. oh Lord God, to be a member of the house of the yes. Lord, dear Lord God, which is Jesus is the head, dear Lord. Lord God, teach us to remember, Lord God, that we are to be, oh Lord God, one in the faithful Jesus Christ, dear Lord God. Oh Lord God, we love you this morning, dear Lord God. We give you praise and glory, dear Lord. Lord God, we thank you for Paradise Emmanuel Tabernacle Baptist Church. We thank you, Lord God, for our pastor, Bishop Curtis Miller, dear Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, and we ask you to continue to bless the Lord. Truly, you know what he's standing in need of. Give him that strength, 
there, Lord God. Even as he tend to first lady, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, give him the strength, oh, Lord God. Bless her, Lord God. Touch her body, Lord God. Lord God, we need healing of the soul, physically and mentally, Lord God. Lord God, we just thank you, Father. We pray, Lord God, for every minister, every Lord God ministry, dear Lord God, every Oh, Lord God, leader in this place, Lord God, that we will walk together in Christian love, Lord God, that we will strive for the advancement of this church, dear Lord, as we say every first Sunday, dear Lord God. Lord God, that we will continue to lift you up, Lord, and give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. We pray for those that don't know you in the part of their sins, Lord God, for we know that Jesus is soon to come back, dear Lord God. We want our family to be saved and safe, Lord God. Lord God, just have mercy even now, dear Lord God. Look upon our children, our young ones, oh Lord God. Look upon our sick and our elderly, Lord God. Look upon those in the military, Lord God. Lord God, they need your help, our president and major, mayor, dear Lord God. But Lord God, just look upon the saints today, dear Lord God. Lord God, and we just give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. In Jesus' name, our soul says amen.
love that one so good and be. Bill and Luke, on, come and pray for our children.
drafting, prepare to receive our offering. We can prepare to receive our offering. We have a tithes and our offering. Amen. Amen. As they, as they come, as they come. Return it to them from 30, 60, even 100 fold because we can never, yes. ever be you given. Never. We know that all things come of the field, Lord, and of their own have we given thee all things. Amen. 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 
Well, on behalf of our pastor, Bishop Curtis Miller, uh, Reverend Lawson, Reverend Murphy, Elder and Evangelist Wozan, uh, Reverend Pompey in her absence, our First Lady in her absence, Deacons, brothers and sisters in Christ. We welcome you once, we welcome you twice. We welcome you three times in the name of the Lord our Savior Jesus Christ. I would like to read you the word of scripture. First Peter 5, 8 says, Be sober, be diligent, because your adversary, the devil, as they go on line and walking about seeking who he can be found. Be blessed. Praise the Lord, family. Praise the Lord. As everybody knows, when I come up to the program, I'm always saying, and I believe that was in my heart. And I'm so happy to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. Especially to see you and every one of you. And let me know the Lord is still in the blessing. Yeah. I have your announcements. Um, Paradise Emmanuel Tabernacle Baptist Church. Um, Bishop Curtis Miller is our pastor and teacher. Keep welcoming you today. You are invited to grow in grace. His Sunday worship service starts at 11 a.m. And join us on Facebook Live at Paradise Emmanuel Tabernacle Baptist Church and Wednesday's prayer and Bible study at 6 o'clock p.m. The announcements. For today, uh, Sunday, September 12th, there's no afternoon service. Amen. Sunday, September 19th, there's no afternoon service. Amen. Saturday, September 24th, 25th, at 1 o'clock p.m. is the church meeting. And Sunday, September 26th, there's no afternoon service. Coming soon, September 3rd, at 3 o'clock p.m., Bishop Miller will be the guest preacher at Fifth Chapel Baptist Church, located at 4718 Wooden Avenue, celebrating the Bishop Ryan's anniversary. We are all invited to fellowship. Reminders, before the service, speak to the Lord. During the service, let the Lord speak to you. Mm -hmm. As the service, speak to one another. Be thoughtful, be signs, be birds. We want to say happy birthday to those celebrating the birthday in September. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest thou prosper and be in health, and even that thou shalt prosper. John 3, 1, 2. Happy birthday, Deacon Ness, the Tease McCoy. And happy birthday, we'll be coming up here on the 26th, will be the Julie Dolly Amen. Amen. This is your anniversary. Amen. Amen, we do. Thank God for those who are celebrating the birthday this month. Amen. Yeah. Join me up. We sang happy birthday to those who are celebrating the birthday this month. Amen. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to everybody. here today. We ask the blessings upon our visitors today. We thank God for them today and we we see shining. <laughs> thank God for all of you. Amen. Amen. We just pray God blessing upon each and every one of you. Amen. 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 He's a good God. He can keep us in these trying times. We just keep our trust and our faith in God and God will see us through. Amen. 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 Well, we, we, we're getting ready for some preaching. Amen. Amen. Getting ready for some preaching. So uh, after our uh, musician uh, render us a selection, the next voice you will hear will be that of our, our own Pastor Murphy. Amen. Amen. He will come and 
says what thus says the Lord. Amen. 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 So get ready, get ready, get ready.
Amen. Once again, let's thank God uh, for our pastor. Amen. Amen. First lady, Amy Miller. Amen. Amen. And thanking all of you. Amen. For not counting in robbery to be in the house of the Lord yes. one more time. Amen. 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 Did anybody come in here today to magnify the name of Amen. the Lord? Because if you came for anything else, you're in the wrong place. Hallelujah. Amen. But if you came to magnify the Lord, I think David said it well. Yes. Will you magnify the Lord with me? Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm just going to turn my attention to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Can I get some help this morning? Amen. Amen. Can we just turn our attention to the Lord? Amen. Because nobody else can help you. Nobody else can rescue you. Nobody else can heal you. Nobody else can deliver you. Nobody else can bless you like him. Amen. Nobody can speak to your life like him. Amen. If you want something real, amen, then you got to talk to the real one. Amen. Amen. And his name is Jesus. Amen. I don't know about you, but it ain't time to play church no more. Amen. My God, he's trying to kill, steal, and destroy. Amen. He wants to destroy your joy, take your business, close down your home, cause your car to break down, to steal your health. He wants to take your peace. Amen. And if you keep playing around with it, amen, he's going to take your stuff. Amen. That's why if, even if you don't feel like it, you've got to know this for real. I'm in the middle of a fight for my life, and I ain't come to play church. I'm not going to pity pack God, amen, but I came to turn up in the name of Jesus. Do I got a witness? Hallelujah. He's serious about taking you out. You better be serious about staying in the game. Amen. Amen. You got your Bibles with you this morning? Yeah. Or your phone, or your tablet, yeah. whatever you got this yeah. morning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Go with me to Genesis chapter 32. It's a familiar text. Genesis chapter 32. Uh, we can start at verse 23. Genesis chapter 32. Amen. Now, if you're having a hard time finding that location, <laughs> it's the first book of the Bible. <laughs> Amen. Verse 23 says this, and he took and he took his brother with him Pursued after him. Oh, am I wrong? Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Yes. I'm dealing with Bishop there. See, I'm from there. <laughs> Amen. And he took them. Amen. And sent them over the brook. And sent over that he had. And Jacob was left alone. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of death. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as prince hast thou power with God and with men and has prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, wherefore it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. And as he passed over Peniel, the sun rose up upon him, and he halted upon his thigh. Therefore the children of Israel eat not of the sinew which is shrank 
which is upon the hollow of the thigh unto this day, because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh in the sinew that shrank. This is the word of God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I read long, so I'll preach short. Amen. 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 I figured I'd get an amen with that. Amen. <laughs> amen. Bishop told me if the Eagles play today, so I need to, I need to cut it down. Amen. <laughs> amen. 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 <laughs> it's a familiar text. Uh, just like Ephesians chapter 6 verse uh, 12 tells us, amen, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and authorities and high, dark, wicked places. Amen. That if you did not know it, that as soon as you made a commitment to the Lord, you stepped in or stepped on the battlefield. And whether you know how to use your weapons or not, the enemy is not going to wait until you're trained in how to use your weapons. He begins to attack you immediately. Uh, the truth be told is, is that even before you came to Christ, his whole object was to keep you from coming to Christ. So he made everything around you look better than what it was because he did never wanted you to realize that there was something better than being without Jesus. Amen. He did not want you to realize that there was a God that loved you in spite of you. He, he never wanted you to realize that this ain't all there is to life. He never wanted you to realize your call and your potential in this life. He, he never wanted you to ever reach your destiny in Jesus. And so he brought everything he could in your life. For some of us it was drugs and alcohol. For some of us it was bad relationships. For some of us amen it was distractions and church hopping from one place to the next place to the next place. Every time something didn't go our way we found ourselves hopping to some place else. I'm here to tell you today that you you need to just be planted with it and bloom where God has put you. Go through what you got to go through because if you have any experience like I have, even though I left one place when I got to the new place, guess who came with me? Me. No matter where I go, no matter where I went, me kept coming with me. And me was the worst problem that I had. It wasn't the folks in the church. It wasn't the pastor and the people at the church. It wasn't even my boss on the job. It was me. I was the worst enemy that I had because me didn't want me to have nothing and I couldn't get over me. And I continued to struggle in this life because I kept taking my focus off of God and putting it on me. What about me? When I'm going to get better? When they going to promote me? When they going to give me? When they going to recognize me? When they going to realize? When they going to whatever? Amen. Get over you. Tell somebody, get over you. We think about the past. She has been rough. Going through all types of hell. Some have been on an emotional roller coaster, to be honest, of grief and loss. But I want to share with you that just maybe what you're going through, God is really doing something new in your life. I know it's hard to really fathom that I'm going through what I'm going through and it was signified that God is doing something new. But I'm here to tell you that every time God does something to bless you doesn't mean that it always feels good. Because the Bible says that all things, everything, anything is working together for your good if you love him and you're called by him. Amen. Uh, I want to invite you to look at this past year through the eyes of God in the life of Jacob. 
the grandson of Abraham and Sarah, the son of Isaac and Rebekah, the eternal twin of Esau, Jacob from whom the 12 tribes of Israel is named after his sons. I hope that you realize that Jacob is not a man in the initial part of his life of righteousness or integrity. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you research it yourself, and I know you've heard it before, that Jacob's name meant trickster, manipulator, conniver, conner. He was a con artist. He was a trickster. As a matter of fact, he tricked his brother Esau out of his birthright. As a matter of fact, he went so deep into his trickster mode that he put fake animal hair on himself to cause his father, who was blind, to think that he was his brother Esau. Uh, how many of us know that sometimes we go through great lips to fool other people? You might fool me some of the times, amen, but you cannot fool God any other time. No matter how many masks we put on, how many amens we say, how many hallelujahs we say, and no matter how religious we say it, God knows exactly what you do from Monday through Saturday and what's going on in your life. Lied to his father on his deathbed. He's a manipulator. He's a liar. A con man. And by the time we get to chapter 32, everybody is sick of Jacob. <laughs> his father-in-law kicks him out. And his wives leave him. <laughs> and Esau still wants to kill him. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That you've done so much dirt. You've done so much wrong that people wouldn't even want you to come visit them. My God, well just let me get my let me just talk about me since you act like you ain't been stupid enough. That I've done so much that my family would turn out the lights and close the blinds and say, I hope he go away. <laughs> that when you call, they block your number. <laughs> and they make it clear, you are not welcome here. <clears throat> Dirt. You know what I'm talking about. There are some family members that will never let you come over again. Because you got over there and turned up, got lit, stood on their furniture, whatever you did, cursed everybody out, went wild, you, you just did your thing, and they ain't never letting you come back again. <laughs> you was good till you got them two shots up in here. <laughs> then somebody else came out. <laughs> Jacob's parents had passed on. His father in law kicked him out. His wives had went on over the other side of Cornell. And here is Jacob. Nobody wants to be bothered with him. Everybody is done with him but God. They was all talking about Jacob. <laughs> they, they had all types of things to say about him. There was never going to be any good that came out of him. Uh, it was strange that, that, that he was in this position because while he was with his father-in-law, he did do some things that prospered him. And while everybody else is judging you, about what you've done wrong in the past, the hiccups along the way that you had, only because somehow they forgot when they came to church after partying, being hooked up, getting tipsy, going to the club, the many times that they fell to. But why is that so important? Because you don't need to worry about what they think. All right. All right. All right. All right. God has purposed 
to change Jacob, even if he got to wrestle with him in the middle of the night. Let me tell you about a God that will jump you in the midnight. I, I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but I know you know he's the God of mercy and the God of grace. But I'm going to tell you about the God that will sucker punch you in the middle of the night. Listen, Jacob ain't know who it was. God just jumped him. In other words, he was saying, it's enough of this. It's enough of what you've been doing. It's enough of what they've been doing. It's to be just jumped him. Have you ever been in a spot where you were just sitting there and God just overwhelms you? You don't even know what's going on, but you start to cry or you start to pray. God's presence just come and overwhelm you. He jumps you. And then you start remembering all the stuff you just did the other day. And everything that you said that was wrong. And God has jumped you. Because he needs to change you. Amen. He has a purpose to change Jacob. And just like us, God is using our current situation to change us. Even though it feels like you ain't gonna make it through, I'm here to declare, yes you will. Even though it looks like it keeps getting harder, you have some good days and then you have some bad days and you don't know when you're up and down, I just wanna tell you, you won't get through this. I just wanna tell you because if God puts you in it, he gonna bring you out of it. And it's not meant to destroy you, but it's meant to change you. But in order for God to do so, we first must deal with the issue that Jacob had to deal with first, which was being alone. A lot of us get in trouble because we got issue with being alone. A lot of us hang out with folks that we shouldn't hang out with because we don't want to be alone. Uh, we do things in order to get attention because we don't like being alone. Because when we alone, I got to deal with the ugly of me. I ain't gonna get no help in here. I ain't talking about what they said about me. I ain't talking about what they said about me. I'm talking about what I know about me. And when I look in the mirror, I see some things I don't like and I don't like dealing with the ugly of me. So what I do is I change my focus and deal with the ugly of you. I ain't gonna get no help in here. You ever get sick and tired of yourself? Amen. You just keep doing stuff that just gets you mad at you. You ain't you think you mad at them, but the truth of it is you mad at yourself. You can't believe you went for that again. You can't believe you let them hoodwink you again. You can't believe that you went there again. You can't believe. My Lord. God will put us in a place where all we have is God. Like Jacob, we don't know how to be alone with God. We got to turn on the TV or put the radio on. We got to do something. Because I can't stand this silence of being alone with God. Because I keep finding out when I'm alone with him, he tells me more about me. And the stuff he keeps showing me don't look good. But, but listen, this is the good part. If he's showing you, you, then that means he's trying to help you change from the old you to the new you. Don't worry about how ugly it is because he's the one to make that which is crooked straight. But I can't get better because I keep avoiding the situation. I keep avoiding the issue. I keep dealing with the surface of it. Drinking is the surface. Cursing is the surface. Cigarettes is the surface. The issue is the sin. Why do I do what I do? Paul makes it clear in Romans chapter 7. Every time I try to go to do good, evil always present with me. I 
want to do the right thing. I made my mind up to do the right thing. And then as soon as I go to do the right thing, evil convinces me to do the wrong thing. I was going to say hi to Sister So-and-So this morning until I saw her. I know it. <laughs> Always need the company of people. Even at birth, Jacob had an issue of being alone. The Bible says as soon as they were being born as twins, he grabbed the heel of his brother. You ain't leaving me. In the womb. Even when his brother went out to hunt, he went with him. Can I go? <laughs> He needed two wives and concubines. Struggled to be detached from people. He was addicted to people. And the truth of it is, is you don't need to be delivered from the alcohol. You need to be delivered from people. People, places. And I need to be delivered from folks. Because folks are the ones that drive me crazy. Folks are the ones that say things and now I try to live up to it. It's folks' expectation that get me twisted, feeling stressed out and overburdened. I just came to tell you, I ain't God. I can't do nothing. I'm going to pray for you. We're going to trust in the Lord and the other. I can't make it happen without him. Stop letting people put expectations on you to be something that you're not. When well, Rashira sings that wonderful, one of her wonderful songs, I ain't put you on blast, but when she sang one of her wonderful songs, amen, as much as I enjoy it and as much as I would love to do it, I know who I am. Yes, 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 yes. And though the bishop said, go on, sing that song. <laughs> Not my gift. We, we allow people to put us in positions that we ain't called a gifted at. And then we find ourselves struggling trying to be something that God ain't never called us to be. Mm. Struggling to be attached. Detached from people. Amen. One of the most fearful things to have to do is to be alone with God. Why? Because when I'm alone with God, I must deal with me. Yes, uh -huh. yes, yes. And who I really am. Uh -huh. See the text. The angel asks what his name is. Yes, yes, yes. He knows your name, but wants you to admit your true condition. Come on, somebody. <laughs> see, see, when he said, see, you got to go back. You got to understand that when you got a name in the Old Testament, your name meant something. It was a part of the character of who you were. And so when he said, my name is Jacob, he really was saying, I am the kind artist. I am the liar. I am the whoremonger. I am the drinker and the drunker. I am. I am all of those things. I am twisted. I will do some stuff. I am the get over art. I am the one that makes believe. I am the, the great pretender. I am all of those things. I ain't playing no games no more. I want to get healed. Who am I talking to? I want to get delivered. I'm not playing games with this. I am my condition. This is what I do. But I know I can get better. Oh, we so caught up with the mask. We so caught up with being fake. That that's why we have so many struggles in the church. Because we don't know who you are. You don't know who I am. Because we all come in with a mask on. Faking the funk. But if we're going to ever get better, we got to take it off. And I know you don't, 
the real me might scare you all, but that's okay because I got God. All right. So I'm just going to have to be me. Because if I be me, then I can find out what's wrong with me. I can find out what needs to be fixed in me. Then I can be a better me. I ain't going to get no help in here. I, I can't keep faking it because I can't get no help. I got to let some folks know I'm struggling with some things. I, I, I don't care if you run and tell it. Go tell that. But if you're going to tell something, tell them about a God that can rescue anybody. Run and tell it. I ain't got time to worry about what people are going to say. Right. I got to get back. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If y'all been looking around, he coming soon. Yes. Yeah. 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 He said there'll be wars and rumors of war. <laughs> Daughters will turn against mothers and sons against fathers. And people will become lovers of who? Themselves. Man. I don't need a calendar to tell me it's getting close. So I got to work on me to get to the better me that's in him. Woo, Jesus, I need to help me. Amen, Jesus. He knows your name. He knows my name. Amen. He knows my name. Amen. He, he, don't, he don't accidentally call me Jack. He knows my name. He knows exactly who I am. Wait a minute. He knows me before I even open my mouth and he hears my voice. He knows me. He, he knows me. So why, why am I faking it with God when he already knows how wretched I am? And that my righteousness is as a filthy man. Poor ain't going to get this thing out. I'm trying to help somebody this morning. I need something more. <laughs> if y'all ain't getting y'all to miss the lesson. <laughs> if you missed the lesson of what you've been through this past year, your prayer life hasn't gotten better. You missed it. If you still real prideful. Oh, you missed it. Okay. I, I don't know how you went through pandemic and not changed. All right, all right, all right. I, I don't know who went through the pandemic and ain't wrestled with this stuff. I ain't taking that. I'm taking that. I ain't taking that. I'm wearing that. I ain't wearing that. It was a struggle the whole time. I'm going. I ain't going. I'm just, I'm, I ain't doing it. It's safe. It's not safe. It's over. It's not over. <laughs> <laughs> Still talking to other people before you pray. All right, my Lord. You ain't learned nothing. Right. You still getting on the phone calling her? <laughs> to talk about him? <laughs> to talk about that? Haven't you already gotten it that they can't help you? Yes, yes. And if you be honest with you, you just trying to find somebody to agree with you. And the crazy thing you about to do. Because you know God ain't going to agree with it. So you ain't going to the Bible when you ain't going to pray. Because you already know the answer. <laughs> Number two. The second thing God has to do, or he does, is he helps us. Or we must realize how much we need God. If you ain't learned nothing else through this pandemic, you realize how much you need God. Because I just have an issue that if I can, if I wear a mask and the mask can get wet, why can't nothing get through it? I mean, if it's in the air and I can breathe through it, that I don't understand how I can't nothing come through. Just my thoughts. But they say protection. Okay. The reality of it is, is that you ain't get it because God's hand. You can take 20 vaccines and I don't know who I'm talking to. You, you, whatever. 
Now, I, I, I'm, I'm going to do the best I can, but the reality of it is, just like meditation, I still got to pray over it because I need God to bless the medicine. I need God to bless the mask. I need him to, to, to bless the vaccine. I need God to just put his hands on it. That's why I said, whatever you eat, I'll do. Pray over it first. The text says that the angel realizes that he can't overpower Jacob. In other words, Jacob had finally gotten to his body. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. He realized that if God don't do something, right. I'm done. Right. If God don't show up, I ain't getting through this. If God don't make a way, ain't no way gonna be made. If God don't heal me, I ain't gonna never get swept. If God doesn't do it, it won't get done. He realizes that my God, all this time I've been playing games, I've been tricking folks, I've been conning folks, I've been trying to make it work on my own. But my God, I'm at a place now where everybody has left me. All by myself. I don't even got a prayer partner in this thing. I got to pray by myself. I got to cry by myself. Matter of fact, I got to talk with myself to get myself. I don't know who I'm talking to, but David said, encourage yourself. Yes. 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 Truth is that Jacob realized. He could not overpower God with his tricks and his manipulation and his lying. It ain't going to get him out of this one. Somebody should praise God right there for what God did not choose to do. <laughs> what am I saying? You should give him praise for mercy. Because after all of that stuff, here comes God showing up. Even in the midst of why others have left me. I didn't even love myself. Here comes God loving me. I couldn't even stand and look at me. I didn't want to be around me. That's why I was around everybody else. But God said, I love you in spite of you. I'm going to use you in spite of what you're doing. I'm going to magnify the work I got in your life in spite of what they say. The struggle humbles him. And like us, he realized he can't control everything and that we are not in control of anything. So imagine God jumps you late at night. And I would imagine that because Jacob ain't know it was God, he might have thought it was his worst enemy and his worst fear, which was his brother Esau. Mm. And while he's wrestling, fighting for his life, God puts a move on him that he ain't never seen before. When you when you're a good fighter, when you when you do something good and God shows up and, and puts a on you, you ain't never seen before. He gets your attention. And the Bible says that he broke his hip. So that he had no, so because if you're a wrestler and your hip is gone, you, you can no longer wrestle. Because all of your strength is from here. You got no moves to make. You can't do anything because as soon as you put weight on it, it causes severe pain. You can say God took him out of the game. And you got to realize, and I must realize, that we can't control our circumstance. But God can. We can control how we respond to our circumstance. And breaking his hip, God incapacitates what would be considered the strongest muscle in the area of his body. Like us, God will incapacitate what we think is our strength. So he shows us our weakness by incapacitating our strength. You used to be strong in that. 
That thing didn't used to bother you. But now all of a sudden, the thing that used to not bother you gets on your last nerve and takes you off your square. He's showing you the areas in which you are weak. Strengths can sometimes cover up our weaknesses. Because we'll hide behind our strength and never deal with the areas of weakness. In this past year, we've seen a boatload of our weaknesses so that God can change the source of our strength. Y'all ain't working with me. You was relying on people. You was relying on you. You was relying on a job. You was relying on a check. But God showed up and said, that check ain't going to get you through. That job ain't going to get you through. Those people going to leave you. And you realize, I have to change my source of my strength. For the joy of the Lord is my strength. I had to realize that my strength wasn't in my money. I had to realize that my strength wasn't in my family. I had to realize that my strength wasn't in my job. I realized that my strength wasn't in my smarts. But my strength is holding on to God's unchanging hand. First wrestle with God. Then God breaks his hip. And the only thing he could do to get through was hold on. This whole season was a hold on to God's Because I didn't know how this was going to work out. I wasn't sure that this thing was going to kill me. I wasn't sure that I was going to get a job. I wasn't sure. And so all I had was to hold on to God. Because it was the only stable thing yes, in my life. Yes, While everything is being shaken, I'll just hold on. Oh, because God is the same today. Right. Come on now. Yesterday. Yes. And forever. I stopped by paradise this morning to tell you don't let go yet. This ain't the season for letting go. This ain't the season for quitting. This the season for holding on. Because if anybody going to bless you, his name is Jesus. So I'll just hold on while the storm comes. I'll hold on while my foundation gets shook. I'll just hold on. Yes. This ain't the time to walk away. Mm. Matter of fact, get you a little... Uh, name plate and put it on the chair. Just say that's my spot. I'll be back. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. And lastly, in the midst of what we're going through, we got we must maintain worship uh -huh. while being wounded. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We must maintain worship while being wounded. The meaning. I'm gonna close right here. The meaning of Pinnell is I saw God or I saw God face to face. He could have named that place anything. Yes. He could have named that place the place I got my head broke. <laughs> he could have named that place the place I wrestled with God. He could have named that place the place where everybody left me. He could have named that place the place of loneliness. But he saw the power in the work of God in the midst of what he was going through in his struggle. And he decided, I ain't going to name this my place of pain. Uh, I could have called this the place where all heck breaks loose. Uh, the, the place where everything is lost. Uh, the place where I gave up on the church. Uh, but if you look back and find where you last saw God, that should be your pity your moment. I ain't gonna get no help in here. Because pity your means, uh, in the midst of what I was going through, I saw God. Uh, and you gotta remember when your pity your moment took place. Uh, I ain't gonna get no praise here. Uh, but you gotta remember. Uh, because my pity moment uh, was the time that I was struggling and God showed up. Y'all gotta get this. Yes, sir. It's not a long period of time. It's a moment. It's just a moment in time. You gotta be ready. Because when your pity moment comes, it's your place of change. 
And it don't always come. But when it comes, you got to be ready for it. That's why I tell you, when you come to church, come expecting. Yeah. Don't come to play church. Don't come worrying about who here and who ain't here. Don't worry about who preaching who ain't preaching. Don't worry about who's saying who ain't saying. I came because I need change. Job said it well. I'm going to wait until my change comes. And my change comes from the Lord. I ain't come to wait on you. God's going to change my circumstances. And I came with an expectation. I don't care if a donkey preach. I don't care if it's a cat preaching. It don't make a difference. But I just need to hear God. It's my pity on moment. It's my time. Any given Sunday. Hallelujah. Well, here's some stuff you can do. To help you find your penny or moment that you don't know what it looks like. <laughs> we must recognize that God spared our life. Can anybody say that through this pandemic God didn't spare your life? Yes, he did. You sure can. Because you ain't know if you was next in line. Amen. You ain't know if it was going to break out in your house or not. Yes. You ain't know if it was going to break out at your job or not. Yes. You didn't know you had a cough and you were scared to death. Yes. Uh -huh. We got to recognize that God spared us. Here's how you know he spared you. Not just because of COVID, but if you go back that, and look at all the stuff you did wrong. Your sins Woo. that didn't catch up with you. Because the wages of sin is what? Yeah. And you still here? He spared you. I ain't gonna get no help. I wish I had somebody that recognized that whatever sickness could have came, it could have been cancer, diabetes, I don't know what it could have been. But I ain't got it. He spared me. While others' houses were being home invaded, they didn't invade my house. I was spared. It ain't because of the neighborhood I'm in. It's not because of your alarm system. It's because of the protection. He spared me. As crazy as I was. You know how you came home from that party all tore up, you was lit. You know when we get drunk, we think about God. Lord, I, I love you, Lord. It's the hitty talk. Lord, I love you, Lord. And then the next verse we say, I'm only human. <laughs> but how come we don't use that with the clergy? Because right. they, they only human too, right? <laughs> Hold on so God has a different standard for the clergy than you? I don't think so. When you find it in the Bible, let me know. COVID didn't kill you. God's mercies kept being renewed every moment. Watch this. Mercy, his mercy being renewed, mercy just means undeserved faith. You deserve to be cast into the place of darkness, but it ain't doing. Yeah. You deserve not to be here, but here you go. Uh -huh, yeah. Some of us deserve to be locked down and locked away, uh -huh. but he ain't doing it. Uh -huh. He spared you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you Lord. Number two, he ain't just spared you, but he rescued you. Yeah. Right. Thank you. One thing we we your, your fault. It's not your fault to be and be rescued. And it's another thing to be rescued, and it's your fault. You made the mess, but God still rescued you. You created this nonsense, but God still rescued you. Oh my God. Oh, but it's another level of praise when you know you did it and he rescued you anyway. That's why you see folks like some folks just break out in a dance. Because you know you wrong is two left feet. But here you are standing up in the presence of the Lord. And he ain't take you out yet. I think I'll get my dance on. I think I'll get my praise on. 
See, you worried about stuff. You worried about relationships. You worried about people. But I'm here to tell you, if you made it to church today, he spared you and he rescued you. Look at what Jacob said. Not only did he spare me, not only did he rescue him, but mother, he blessed him. He blessed him. Spared me, rescued me. Now I know he blessed me. Can I get somebody to shout he did? The Lord is blessing me. Wait a minute. I ain't going to get no help in here. I said the Lord. I said the Lord. Not the, not, not the poop, but the Lord. The Lord. He's blessing me. Now I know why you ain't saying nothing. Because you don't feel it right now. But I'm telling you. He's blessing you. Right now. He's blessing me. Right now. I shouldn't be here, but he spared me. I shouldn't be here, but he rescued me. And my God, he blessed me. Not tomorrow, not yesterday, right now. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Great. Close. For the blessing. Yes. 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 So if you feel like you're being broken, that's why you can say he's blessing me. Yes. Right now. Right. Broken hip, broken emotionally, broken spiritually. He finally told the truth about his name and his character. Everybody in here must wrestle with God to receive his blessings. God blessed Jacob because Jacob was alone with God, meaning he had no more distractions. Jacob was now hungry for God and wanted what God had for him. Jacob was broken by God and he finally allowed God to break him so that he could change him. And Jacob finally stopped pretending. He was no longer the great pretender. God was faithful. And watch this. And he limped. I, I want you to get this so we can get out of here. Jacob got up from wrestling with a limp. And this is what I believe Jacob's response was. I got a limp, but I can still walk. I got some issues, but I'm still getting into the house of the Lord. They talking about me, but guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to praise his name. I, I got some struggles in my life, but, but God's still with me. Because he'll never leave me, nor forsake me. I got some struggles in my life, but don't get tripping on my lip. Because I got this lip by God, and my lip signifies change. And if you see me a little broken, don't pity me. Praise for me. Give God glory for me. Because in the breaking is my blessing. I still don't get it. Yeah. He's limping, but he ain't limping to nowhere. He's limping somewhere. Because the Bible says that he went over the pinyo, heading somewhere. Where was he going? He was going to Cain. I ain't gonna get no help in here. I got a limp, but I'm gonna take my limping self right on into the promise. Whatever God promised me, I'm gonna limp in to get. I don't care what it looks like to you. I'll drag this old foot. I'll get my old walker. I'll take my hurting back pains. I'll take my nearsighted eyes. Whatever I got, because I'm going on to the promises that God has for me. He was going to meet Esau and go into the promise. And guess what? He didn't care about Esau no more. Because whatever was in front of him, he knew he could handle it with God on his side. Amen. I don't know if you were here last week, but I want you to be encouraged. 
that you need to trust yes. in God. Yes. See, when you see the word but, we get excited. But God. That means that everything that was before the but yes. goes away. Yes. And nothing matters but what's coming after the word but. But nobody really going to give them praise for the and the lip. <laughs> Who am I talking to? Because God will do the and thing with you. <laughs> but there's a blessing in the and. <laughs> because I can be frustrated and blessed at the same time. <laughs> I can be upset and have joy at the same time. <laughs> I can be struggling and be blessed by the great almighty God at the same time. <laughs> I can be broke and rich at the same time. <laughs> Who am I talking to? I can be lost and found at the same time. You've heard it before, the lost and found. I can be there too. I can be slow and fast at the same time. Oh my God, I can be alone and with him at the same time. You got to take that hand and be blessed with it. Take your hand and walk into the promises of God. Who am I talking to? I've got issues, but I'm going to keep on moving. Cause I feel uh, no ways uh, tired uh, yet. Uh, watch out, uh, I'm moving on uh, to higher heights. Uh, don't let my lip fool you. Uh, I still got moves uh, in the name of Jesus. I won't let go. No matter what comes. Until he blesses me. Amen. 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 The Lord is blessing me. Uh -huh. Right now. Right now. Right now. I can't see it, but I know it. He's blessing me oh, yeah. right now. Yes. If you're here today and you haven't accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, don't do it the same way. You don't have to. Everything that's been done today is for you. If you haven't accepted Him as your Lord and Savior, here's your opportunity wherever you might be at in the sanctuary. Just slip your hand up. Say, I need Jesus. Maybe you know Him. And you know Him in the power of His saving hand. But you've been through your own wrestling. And your wrestling has caused you to step back from fellowship with God. You need restoration today. I need to get back to praying and I need to get back to church. If that's you today and you need restoration, this is not church membership. It's just restoration. If that's you, slip your hand up wherever you might be. Amen, I see your hands. Last call. Maybe you need a church home. Maybe you've been a member of this church, but you ain't been in it for a while. You need to rededicate. If that's you, you need rededication. Amen. We're going to ask that wherever you slip in, slip out, come up front. We want to pray for you. I just need to rededicate. Come on, Mom Rose. You're coming up. Come on. Amen. I ain't been here in a while. And I just want to be back in right standing. In the church. You're going to rededicate yourself. Come on. Amen. Let me say this to you. You got to do it for you. You got to do it for you. Because that's the only thing that's going to work. And last call, maybe you just need prayer. You just need prayer today. Boy, that's, I've been wrestling all week long. You don't even know the stuff I've been going through. If that's you, just slip your hand up. Amen. I just need strength to get through this fight. Amen. Let us pray for you. Father, first, those that raise their hands for prayer. God, we believe you by faith, God, Lord, that all things are possible with you. And God, we pray, God, Lord, that you would meet every need, for you know what their needs are, God. You knew it before you raised their hand, but God, you wanted them to participate yes. with you. So, God, we thank you right now and believe you by faith, God, Lord, for what you're doing in their life. I pray, God, that if this wrestle, this fight, this struggle produces change that is spiritual in their life. We thank you, God, for those that came for rededication, God. And we pray right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, that you would bless them, God. You know their struggles and what they need right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray for strength 
Touch their minds, touch their hearts, God. Renew their strength, renew their joy, renew their peace for you, God. And God, renew their passion for the work here, God, in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you, God, that just like the prodigal son, God, Lord, that you placed them back where he left off at, God, that they could continue to work that he stopped, God, that he might finish. I pray right now, Father, Lord, that you would do it for your glory and for your name's sake. And God, we thank you, God, for all these things. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. you are blessing us right now. Yes, so God, Lord, we stay open for you, God. We have our hands open for you. We have our hearts open for you so that God, Lord, that you can bless us the way that you know that we need to be blessed. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. See, the only wise God, our Savior, be majesty, glory, dominion, and power both now and forever. Let the church sing 